Ah, it's really good to see you folks. I hope you enjoyed your long holiday weekend. But it ain't over yet, right? We've still got New Year's coming up. And isn't it nice that we get to trade in between the two holidays? I like it. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is the day after Christmas. It's December 26th, Tuesday. Now, what we like to do on this show is focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. In simple language, we're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market. They can be on the OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. They all qualify. Now, we're looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. We're looking for heat. But how do you recognize heat? Well, there's a lot of ways to do that. Me, myself, I like to do it the quickest and easiest way. I'm a day trader. I can't be wasting time doing research while stocks are moving. I want to find a hot stock fast. Well, the best way I found to do it is by looking at the charts. At a glance, I can tell you if a chart has heat. I can see volume coming in. I can see the price turning up and breaking through a strong SMA. I can see big bounces. Any of those qualify as heat. Well, as soon as I see a stock chart that has heat, then I take time to go through that company's filings and press releases looking for a catalyst. Whether it came out today, this week, or this month, even a stale catalyst can get a hot chart running. Once I find a hot piece of news to go with my hot chart, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you every day. And of course, I've got three for you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is Sonendo Inc., ticker S-O-N-X. Sonix. Sonix has got a hot chart. I noticed it over the weekend. I was doing some relaxing on Sunday, or was it Saturday? <laughs> I don't remember. But I was doing some charting, looking for charts with heat. And rather than just keeping myself, I was sharing them on Twitter. Well, this was one I shared, and I saw it today, and it looks good. So all we needed was a hot piece of news. Well, we've got a dark catalyst and we've got a light catalyst. And I'm thinking the way the chart's set up, one of the two of these can get it to move. Absolutely. And I'll explain what I mean by a dark catalyst here in a second. So Sonix finished the day at 33 cents and she was up a solid 10%. She is currently on the OTCQX. This is the best tier of the OTC. It's as close as you get to the major exchange in transparency and trustworthiness. They give us a lot of information and of course their financials are audited. They've got every green tick you could hope for here. Verified profile transfer agent. That's validated information to go along with those validated numbers. Independent directors. Yeah, they want to uplist. I assure you of that. And they're penny stock exempt. That's a great bonus. That means they've been in business for three to five years and had millions of dollars in revenues or assets during that time. And they've kept up with their financial filings. They've proven to us they're responsible. They're not a startup company. They're not risky. That's what we're talking about. So what is Sonix all about? Well, in this wee description right here, they tell us they are a leading dental technology company and developer of the Gentle Wave system. Getting more information, we just dive into any of their press releases, right? The company is a commercial stage medical technology company focused on saving teeth from tooth decay the most prevalent chronic disease globally. I can believe that. The company develops and manufactures the Gentle Wave System, an innovative technology platform designed to treat tooth decay by cleaning and disinfecting in the microscopic spaces within the teeth without the need to remove tooth structure. No drilling? I would like that. The system utilizes a proprietary mechanism of action, which combines the procedure of fluid optimization broad spectrum sound energy and advanced fluid dynamics to debride and disinfect deep regions of the complex root canal system in a less invasive procedure that preserves tooth structure. The clinical benefits of the Gentle Wave system when compared to conventional methods of root canal therapy include improved clinical outcomes such as superior cleaning that is independent of root canal complexity and tooth anatomy. Now, I'm thinking just from what I read, this is a lot better than what they've been doing for years. I have had five root canals. Now, it was a while ago, but it sounds like things haven't much changed. A root canal, they take off the 
top part of the tooth that you can see and they save the tooth that's in the gum and hollow it out but your roots go down like carrots in all different directions and they got to get to the bottom of those roots and get the nerve they got to kill that nerve and they do it with these little tiny fuller brushes get down there and spin them and poke and poke and you got to come in five to seven times and every time you leave they pour this like chlorine solution into your tooth and then put a temporary cement over your tooth and for the two weeks you got to wait before you come back all your food tastes like chlorine well their system takes fluid and sound and in a real hard flush blows down into the tooth and just blows this stuff out super clean without having to crack the tooth or do any more damage to the patient so it sounds like a better procedure i would have liked to have tried it so what was the relative volume around the company today Oh, we had a little bit of a drop, maybe 20, 25% in volume, dropping from 1.5 million down to 1.1 million. Share structure for Sonics. Outstanding share count is just about 64 million. We do get a float here, and the float is pretty current. That is this month, the 12th. They say it's 54.5 million. We're going to go with that. Market cap for the company is just about 19 million. Looking at the financials, well, if you overlook the COVID period, they've been growing. 2019, they were at 34 million. Right now, at the end of 22, they were at 41 million. We know that's millions because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts we're looking at. And they are taking home good profits. Looking at the quarterlies, all right, take a look here. Our annual, that was 41 and a half million for 12 months. Well, if we look at our trailing 12 months here, the last four quarters, there's about 45 million there in the last four quarters. So their revenues are growing right now. Taking a look at the balance sheet, cash in the bank, roughly 12 million. Total assets, about 88 million. Total liabilities is less, 50 million. That gives us positive stockholder equity of 37 million. We ain't holding no bag here. Disclosures for the company. Okay, this is the good news. We have got eight Form 4s here. Now, Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company stock. And they can do that in a lot of different ways. But as traders, we're most interested when they buy them or sell them. Well, these are all of those. <laughs> they are buys and sells, and there's nothing strange going on here. But... Most of the cells, I do believe I have one all set up here. Most of the cells are small. You see the S here. Okay, this is, let's back up. This is Chen Roy up here. This is the chief talent officer. So this is the chief talent officer, and he has a code here of an S which says sell. P is for purchase. Any other letter means they didn't buy it or sell it. They got them or got rid of them some other way. So this is a legitimate sale of about 16,000 shares at just about seven and a half cents. And he's got 258,000 shares. So that's not a very big sell. And we see this a lot right now during the economic crunch. And I think people are paying bills. I think they just need a little bit of money and they're liquidating some of it. it has nothing to do with the company. However, the other form fours, our purchases and they're big this is don't make me say that <laughs> this is a director and he purchased you see the big P there 600,000 shares at about a nickel and he now has a little over a million shares we had uh, another name here mr. Olav he's a director he just purchased himself 250,000 shares at nine and a half cents He's got himself almost a million and a half shares. And the last one I found, and there may be a couple more in there. This one came from, there's that name again. He's just bought a second time. A director who's just bought himself another 200,000 shares. I think you're looking at over a million shares just in the three purchases we just saw there. And this one, th this one is at 15 cents. I think the last time he bought was at a nickel. He bought 600,000. Now he just bought uh, 200,000 for 15 cents each. And now he's getting just close to a half million shares. Now, what is the negative catalyst, the dark catalyst? Well, those are the positive ones. The negative one is the fact that they got, wrong button, <laughs> they got demoted. 
It was right here. They got suspended from the New York Stock Exchange just here recently. They are now on the QX, the best tier. They didn't fall down to the pink. The reason they got kicked off of the New York Stock Exchange is they were not meeting the minimum market cap requirement. Right now, we're at 19 million. Minimum is 50 million. When they were contacted, they were at 15 and a half million. By the time the deadline was up, they had it up to almost 38, 39 million. However, that worked out, but they didn't make it. So they got thrown off of the New York Stock Exchange for not having this be at least $50 million. And we are now down here on the OTC market. So why do I call this a dark catalyst? Well, if you're a day trader, you know there's a lot of stocks that run when they announce a bankruptcy or they announce a delisting. This stock just got down here. Now, the best part is most of these companies that get delisted off the major exchanges fall down to the pink, the horrible ghetto pink. This one is in the best tier. It is at the top, the highest echelon. So it's worth considering. And because the chart is so hot right now, I think one of these two is going to get it to move. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We're taking a look at Sonendo, ticker S-O-N-X, Sonix. We're going to chart Sonix and all the other stocks on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. So right now we're looking at a one day, one year chart for Sonix. It was a full year ago in December, we had our high of $2.83. And this December, we hit our low of four and a half cents. And as you can see, these last 30 to 45 days, we've had a lot of volume come in and it is growing. Looking at our six month, four hour view. Six months ago, we had a high of $2.05 and she's been falling all this time, though she did have an attempt to break out right here. It was really short lived. She's come down to this low bubble and she is now changing her trend, breaking through the 200. This is a perfect atypical breakout chart. Now, currently we are at a price of 33.9, let's call it 34. I've got a resistance here at 34. I've got one at 44, one at 55 and one at 70. Now, as I said, off of this low bubble, she's changed her trend. She came underneath all of the SMAs here, then bounced off it, crossed all the SMAs. And once she got on top of the 50, she beelined it straight to the 200. Not one red bar in there floating on the nine day SMA looking strong. All of our other SMAs are now starting to turn up and starting to climb. And speaking of climbing, all of our oscillators down here are hot. The PPO percentage price oscillator and the MACD are going to the moon. Our RSI is just at the 70 right now, just at the overbought point. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So she's slipping downhill underneath the 200 here, hit a low of that four and a half cents, came up on top of the 50. And once she got solid footing here, she launched, jumped through that 200 without looking back. Didn't look back until today after hitting 40 cents. We were back here at four and a half cents. So you're looking at roughly 800% run right there. Today, she fell back from that 40 cents back down to about 34. And it looks like she's struggling to sit on top of that nine day SMA. All of the other SMAs look good, but they too are starting to curve over right now, just like our oscillators. They were all hot, but this big fall today in the back half of the day is pulling everything down. Looking at our five day, five minute view. Now that's not looking bad. We've got a low bubble here. The only time she was under the 200. Once she got over the 200, she launched away from it. Doesn't even want to get close. She is using her 50 day SMA as her solid ground. We had a solid hard breakthrough here and another one here looked like she was going to come to the 200, but she didn't. We had a quick turnaround right there and she is pushing herself back up towards that 20. Our oscillators say we are in recovery mode. You can see the bowl here. It's coming up to the other side of the bowl, getting ready to cross our line. We've already had a crossover on our MACD and the green bars are accumulating. So we got strength accumulating and our RSI is a bit planted right now. It's down there at 46, but everything is over the 200 on the five minute. She hasn't got herself a red hot catalyst. She's got a dark catalyst. She fell down to the OTC, but at least it's not the pink. It is the QX. And we've got a lot of inside buys. And one of them shows a lot of anxiousness. That one guy bought 600,000 shares for a nickel 
and one or two days later, he comes back and he pays 300% more and buys more of them. Why do you think he wanted them so bad? I don't know either, but maybe that's a reason to put SONX on your watch list. Now, here's a company you're probably not familiar with. They've only been on the market for a little while. This is Range Impact, ticker RNGE. Now, though this ticker's only been on the market for a while, the company's been on the market for a long time. They just changed their ticker here recently. And the new chart that came with the new ticker looks good. It's been climbing ever since it came on the market. But when you connect the new chart to the old chart and there is no gap in between, you can see the price fell 50% and right now she is recovering and climbing. So the chart looks good, but we got to keep that in mind. Now they changed their ticker because, well, they didn't actually change their operations. They changed their strategy. They are now doing what they call impact investing. And we'll try to explain that as we move forward. So range finished today at 37 cents with a whopping 48% gains today. She's on the pink. She's current. She's got both of those validated pieces of information we're always looking for. And she's listed independent directors showing her seriousness of wanting to uplist. So what does range impact do? Well, they do more than what they list here, but we'll start here and we'll let the news fill in the gaps. Headquartered in Cleveland, Range Impact is a public company dedicated to improving the health and wellness of people and the planet through a novel and innovative approach to impact investing. Range Impact owns and operates several complementary operating businesses. I'm not sure how complementary they are, but as long as they get along with each other, that's all that matters. We have a particular focus on acquiring, reclaiming, and repurposing mine sites and other undervalued land in economically disadvantaged communities throughout Appalachia. Okay, so what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we had a nice jump, about a 300, 350% increase going from 20,000 shares up to 73,000 shares. Share structure for the company. Wow, they got a lot of authorized shares. They got 1 billion shares that they could put on the market if they wanted to, but they can also use them to pay themselves. They can use them as currency to make deals with other companies. So hopefully they got plans for them and not to put them on the market. Right now, we've got a decent share structure. Outstanding share count is just under 90 million. Insiders have the lion's share, almost 60 million of that, two thirds, leaving us the other third of about a 30 million, which isn't a super low float, but it is a really good float. Market cap for the company, we are about 22 and a half million. Financials for range. Well, look at this. They just started making revenues. We had nothing for the last three years. End of 2022, we had $4.8 million. First revenues coming on the board are strong. And they're in the profits. 1.3, 1.4 million they got to keep. Looking at our quarterly, oh, they're ripping it up, folks. They're making money steady now. They're doing 1.5, 2.6, 3, 3.9. It is growing. Look, this last quarter, they are almost at 4 million. And here we were at 4.8. So if you were to go and add up those last four quarters, you know we're over 4.8, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's about 11 million there. So their revenues are growing fast. Balance sheet for the company, not a lot of money in the bank, 359,000. Assets, we got 9.7 million. Whew. Liabilities are less, 6.5 million. So we do have positive stockholder equity of 3.2 million. Yes. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. Careful, because there is dynamite on this page. Again, we have these Form 4s, and we've got an 8K. Let's blast into these and see what sort of impact this company is going to make. This is the Chief Executive Officer. He just made a purchase on the 21st of 1 million shares at 15 cents. We also have a Director, Edward, he just bought himself 666,000 shares at 15 cents. Then I jumped into that most recent 8K. They tell us they had some investors also buy some shares. On December 21st, Range Impact 
entered into securities purchase agreements with each of its purchasers, selling an accumulated 11,333,000 shares for $1.7 million. So we've got outside investors coming in and we have insiders making purchases. Something's going on. Taking a look at that news. Now we've got a few pieces of news here to consider and we've already actually talked about two of them, the company changing their name and getting that $1.7 million investment. But there's an interesting piece of news that came out on the 7th of this month. The company retains investment banking firm to assist in implementation of a strategic plan for a cannabinoid drug development business. You didn't see that coming, did you? company will focus on core impact investing strategy in Appalachia. All right, this is how they break it down for us. The company announces it has retained First Liberty Securities, a registered broker dealer headquartered in Dallas, Texas, to assist the company in the implementation of its strategic plan for its cannabinoid drug development business conducted by its wholly owned new subsidiary, Graphium Biosciences. In 2021, the company initiated a corporate restructuring plan to create two parallel pathways for shareholder value creation. As part of this corporate restructuring, the company contributed all of its cannabinoid drug development assets previously held in the public parent company into a new wholly owned subsidiary named Graphium Biosciences and launched an impact investing strategy focused on building cash flow generating operating businesses focused on reclaiming and repurposing mine sites in economically challenged communities throughout Appalachia. Do you see how cannabinoids and mining work together? I don't either, but as long as they can make it work, I'm happy. Also, over the past two years, the company has grown from a concept with no revenues, no assets, or any employees into an early stage venture with revenues of $15.1 million over the last 12 months, assets of $18.8 million, and more than 70 employees. From nothing two years ago to something now. Also over the past several years, Graphium's cannabinoid drug development program has been advanced with the successful completion of additional animal studies showing favorable efficacy of our novel drug. The FDA has awarded an orphan drug designation for the treatment of pediatric ulcerative colitis and the filing and prosecution of additional patents to strengthen and expand its intellectual property portfolio. They got a portfolio last year or two years ago, I believe it was, with over 100 identified cannabinoids and what they can do. And they are working on that right now. And they've already got one of them, a fast-tracked orphan designated by the FDA, one out of 100. So they've got a lot of plans right now. Additionally, Graphium has expanded its drug development partnerships with advisors and manufacturers in Australia, and created a detailed and executable drug development plan to advance its leading cannabinoid compound, VBX100, through phase two clinical trials over the next three years, subject to securing the necessary funds. So they're making money, so they're gonna be able to generate their own money for these phase trials, but as they said, they are gonna need more money and they believe they can get it from outside investors. So the company is working with reclaiming and repurposing old mines. I'm presuming that is to get the minerals out of them. And they're working with cannabinoids. And these are complementary businesses. That's their words, not mine. But I do like the way the chart looks. It looks like it has potential for some run. So let's go take a look at that. We're now taking a look at ticker RNGE, range impact, but we're gonna start by looking at our old chart first, as we normally would, a six month, four hour view, but we gotta go back to her old ticker. This is MLCT. So she had a high of 25 cents back in May. She hit a low here, pay attention to this, 10.1 cents. She came back up and she's pretty much just been going sideways right on top of her 200, took a big dip here, falling down to 12 cents, 
tried to climb, fell again back down to 11 cents and then took a rip and she was clear up here at 19 cents. And this is on December 14th. Then our new chart comes into the picture for RNGE. This is December 15th. We are at a price here of 11.8 cents. She fell from 19 cents down to about 12 cents. So it was a big drop just for changing her ticker. And then she started to climb. We did have a drop here to a new low. This is 10 cents. This was 10.1. So this was an all time low right there, 52 week low. And off of this, she has bounced back up onto that nine day SMA. And you can see on our four hour chart, she is floating on that nine day SMA, staying connected to it, right? You see each corner except these two right there. She started to float, but she is predominantly sitting corner to line all the way up. Now she is grabbing some momentum. We were down here at 10 cents. We hit a high of 43 cents. She pulled back to 37 cents. She is right up here right now. Our oscillators are looking perfectly strong. We don't have a lot of them. All we got is our MACD and our PPO, but they look hot. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute. All right, so there's our low of 10 cents and she has been climbing, floating on our nine day SMA all of this time and our bars are starting to get bigger. She's starting to push harder. We've got a 20 day that just came into the picture, a 50 day that just came into the picture. This means that volume is picking up. The more shares you sell, the more data there is. When you finally get enough data, one of these lines appears in the picture. We don't have the 200 yet. Our volume has been stronger these last two days compared to the days before it. And all of our oscillators are looking very strong. They're all climbing. Even our RSI, which took a big dip right in this area, right there, bouncing off of our 20 and launching again. She came down hard, but she is clear up there at 65 right now, looking good to me. So there's not a lot of chart to look at, but what we see looks good. Things are climbing. She is coming back. She is at 43 cents when she was back here at 19 cents. So she has already doubled where she was at before she took the dip. And she is still looking strong to me, folks. So she's got a new strategy. I'm not sure I complete. I mean, I know what they want to do. They want to repurpose mines, reclaim them. I believe they're going to get the minerals out of them. They're working with cannabinoid drugs. There are lots and lots of things that cannabinoids can be used for from joint pain to headaches, to stress, to sleeping, all sorts of things. But the FDA hasn't approved any but one for epilepsy, which did come from a cannabis company on the market, GWHP or GHWP, something like that. But I expect cannabinoids to be big in some countries, maybe not America, because they're cheap. And let's face it, we like to make money off of our drugs in America. But when you go to uh, socialist countries like the UK, Canada, Australia, where the government pays for all the medicine, they want medicines that work, that are cheap, and not addictive. And that's what you got with cannabinoids. So they've got a lot sitting on the table. They've got plans. They're incorporating countries that aren't going to have the same problems we have over here with the FDA. So I see a lot of possibilities here. And I think the chart is warm. Isn't going to hurt you to put this new ticker RNGE on your watch list and keep your eyes on it. I'm glad to share this one with you. And you got to put your eyes on it quick, folks. This is SC Works Core ticker WORX. Her chart is an atypical breakout chart. She is breaking out right now, just to start. So we're not late to the party. And she's got a hot catalyst right on time. The company is doing a merger with another company on the market. So works finished the day at $2.31 with 32% gains today. She's on the major exchange. And these penny stocks on the major exchange come with benefits. You got to appreciate. First off, there's no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks. Two, you can trade them pre-market, after-market. Three, there's lots more volume up on the major exchanges than down at the OTC. And the most important factor, there's more money up on the major exchanges. So like I said, penny stocks on the major exchanges have a lot of benefits. So what does works do? Well, they tell us here that Works develops and markets healthcare information technology solutions and related services to improve healthcare processes, 
paperwork, and information flow within hospitals and other healthcare facilities in the United States. But they also go on to tell us that the company has created an advanced attributed virtualized item data warehouse utilizing machine learning and artificial intelligence to offer a suite of software as a service based solutions for healthcare providers. The company creates a single source for information for the healthcare providers data governance and analytical requirements. Now it sounds a little complicated and technical to me, but I get it. They're putting all the information that everybody needs who are in various places in one place. So no matter where you are, the information's always here and everybody has access to it. I think that's going to be hot. I think it makes everything easy for everybody. So what was the relative volume around works today? Kaboom! Major explosion. That's over 160 times her normal volume, jumping from 25,000 to 4.7 million. Share structure for works. Oh my God. Look at this folks. We have an itty bitty tiny float. I do believe it was just a couple months ago. They did a reverse split. We now have an outstanding share count of 1.2 million. Looks like the insiders own 83,000. We don't care. We've got a very small float of 1.1 million folks. That's microscopic. This thing can fly if it gets any volume. Think about it. If she sells 10 million shares, a measly 10 million shares in one day, she has to sell every share that's on the market 10 times over in one day. Some people aren't going to want to sell their shares. Now there's only 500,000 shares available. That's called supply and demand. Better than a short squeeze, folks. This is real on the positive side. So you can get some serious runs with low floats like this. Market cap, we're down at 2.1 million. Financials for works. Oh, they're taking a dip. They started off at 5.5 million four years ago, fell to 5.2, 4.6, 4. Six, four. <laughs> but they are still bringing home profits. Looking at the quarterly, uh, looks like they're hanging just around a million, just under it, just over it, but they aren't moving anywhere. And it looks like their profit margin has fallen. They're bringing home less money for the same money that they're making. Balance sheet for the company. Not a lot of money in the bank, eh? About 72,000. Total assets, they've got 8.8 .8 million. Yay, total liabilities are low. 2.6 million. That gives us another stock with positive shareholder equity, 6.1 million. I like holding a company that's not a bag. Disclosures for the company. All right, we've got an 8K here, which correlates to the news. We're not going to dive into that here. And you know what a 10Q is? That is their most recent quarterly financial. And if you are interested in the company, don't go reading every news press. Don't go over to Google trying to find information. Just dive into a 10K or a 10Q. It is everything, not just numbers, paragraphs about everything since the day they were incorporated. All their deals, who bought shares, how much they get paid, the things you got to worry about. They don't tell you that in the news presses. So they got everything in there. All right, let's jump on over to that news now. Now we don't have a lot of news over here, but there's a lot of potential in this news. Going back to October, they tell us about the reverse stock split that they implemented for 1 to 15. That gave us that low float. Then we've got two news presses in October and one in December, all about the same thing. That merger, actually a reverse merger. Now we're looking at the one in October. This came out on the 23rd. The company entered into a letter of intent to acquire American Environmental Partners, formerly known as American Energy Partners, ticker AEPT. Now works here is at $2.31. AEPT is on the pink tier. She is down there at three cents. So we have works acquiring the littler company. You're following me. Okay. The company anticipates that the proposed transaction will be structured as a share for share exchange. No money involved here with works shareholders retaining 17% of the combined company after giving effect to a $6 million capital raise by American Environmental. 
Well, what I get there is we get this company works, get 17% of the combined company, though they are the bigger company. They're only getting 17%. The little company, AEPT, obviously is going to end up with 83%. Now there's more to figure into this. They tell us that the proposed transaction has been approved by the board of directors of both companies and is expected to close in the first quarter of next year. The transaction will be considered a reverse merger because the shareholders of American Environmental will own more than a majority of the outstanding common stock. So there you go. They're going to own 83%. Works is going to own 17. The CEO of Works says this is an exciting and critically important time at the company. With the expected infusion of capital in connection with the completion of the proposed transaction, Works should be well positioned to accelerate new revenue opportunities as it continues to pursue data management services for its healthcare customers. Now, jumping over to another piece of information to add into the puzzle American Environmental to list on NASDAQ upon closing. Remember, they're on the pink, but Works is already on the NASDAQ, right? They tell us here that they are going to use the ticker AEPT as the new ticker. We're going to lose works. That $2.32 stock is disappearing. It is going to jump into this boat, AEPT, not this boat, this boat, AEPT, which is at 3.1 cents on the pink. But they say this is uplisting to the NASDAQ. So they're jumping out of the NASDAQ into the pink to go back to the NASDAQ in a smaller boat. I'm a little confused by all of this. So they say upon completion of the transaction and approval of the business combination listing application by NASDAQ, the combined company will be named American Environmental Partners and the shares will trade on the NASDAQ under the ticker AEPT. So it is exactly as I said, this big company, this big boat at 231 is moving into this little boat off of the ocean into the pink pond down here at three cents. My point, we are not investing in works. Works was up today, 32%. AEPT was down 14%. But this is the boat everybody's running to. Why are you poking holes in this boat? Works is running right now. It's a great play, but ultimately everybody's coming over here to AEPT, which is at three cents. And they tell us it's going to the NASDAQ. Well, the NASDAQ has a minimum price for getting on. I think it's $3. It may be four. I think that's for the New York stock exchange, but in either case from three cents to $3 or three cents to $4 is uh, oh my God, a hundred times, right? Going to 30 cents is 10 times. That's a thousand percent gains. We're talking about a 10,000 percent gains going up to the NASDAQ. Now, I don't know how it's going to work. There's a lot to be considered here, but to me, getting out of a big boat into a smaller boat that has to move itself from a little pink pond back to the NASDAQ, there's going to be a lot of price movement. This has to change. So I'm thinking, don't be playing with works. This is the stock we need to consider, AEPT. Since I started it, I did name both of these tickers. We're going to look at both charts. We're going to start off here with WORX. This is a six month, four hour view. We've got a real nice high back in June of $14.40, and we hit a low of $1.61 at the beginning of November. She has been falling underneath the 200. It is basically an atypical breakout chart. She worked hard to get up over this 50, banging her head on it. Once she got over it, she celebrated shooting up to the 200, came down, landed on our 200 day haul. Most of you don't use this, but penny stocks are respecting it. H-U-L-L, 200 day haul. A lot like your 200 day SMA. They take 200 days of prices, average them all together, and then give more credence to current prices. So you end up with a different long-term line. And penny stocks like this one. And as you can see, she laid on it for quite a while before she launched herself today. Volume came into the picture out of nowhere. There was no volume here to talk about, right? And they've been talking about this merger, but it was only today that it wanted to launch. 
So she kicked up way high here from $1.74, woo, up to $3.23, falling back to $2.31, right at the $200 like she wanted to stay there. She intends to climb, but she had to come back down. That was too far away from any SMA. She's got to come down here and worst scenario we're hoping for, she just goes sideways waiting for the SMAs to catch up. Once the SMAs get close, she'll hit them and bounce off of it and ricochet. Everything is set up nicely here. Our MACD, our PPO are climbing. All of our oscillators are climbing. Every single one is going to the moon. You can't go wrong if all of your oscillators are rising. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, she's going sideways on that 20-day SMA until she broke free today. Really jumping hard. Looks like it was all pre-market. Coming down to that 9-day SMA and then growing at a nice steady rate and going sideways after market. And here comes all of our SMAs crossing that 200 right now. Those are golden crosses. You can anticipate strength to come to the growth of the price when each one of these cross over. Not guaranteed, but very probable. Our oscillators, all of them are still very strong, although our RSI is pulled back just a little bit, as has our MACD, but there's still a lot of strength in those charts. Five day, five minute. So she was underneath the 200. Poked it hard here, says, I want to climb. I'm looking for an opportunity. When it sh she fell back, she did not fall any lower than where she started. Started climbing again, bounced off to 50. She's working it. She's going to get over this 50. And right there, when she did, she celebrated. Warm. I mean, look, you can see she almost did it here. Almost, but she fell back under. But here, there was no bot about it. She shot up hard, came down, landed on that 50-day SMA, and really worked the 50. And that's where she's at right now. She's not on a 200. She is working that 50-day SMA. She is... Uh, under the 200, I would expect her to get on top of the 200 just because they really respect, when I say they, I mean penny stocks, respect the 200 haul. And everything is climbing now. Our 200 was falling. Now it's climbing. And look, when did this decide to bounce? Yeah, when it got on top of the 200, but when did it do that? Well, it was falling here, and on the other side, it's climbing. Dead center. Dead center of where it was falling. This is what you see a lot with these big SMAs, the 200 haul, the 200 SMA, the 50. They are catching them right at the center and getting these big bounces. I don't see that very often. All right, let's take a look now at AEPT, which is really the stock I think we should be trading. For the long run, when this deal closes at the first quarter of 2024, I know that sounds like a ways off, but we're probably going to see some anticipation before that. So I'm thinking this should start to move. So what we've got here, we are looking at a six month, four hour view. Where's our high? <laughs> our high is today. We had a high today of 10 cents. Our low was uh, 2.4 cents about five days ago. Our 200 day SMA just came into the picture. Now, if you watch my videos, I have a habit of telling you when a new SMA comes on the board, watch for the price to gravitate towards it. Doesn't matter if the SMA is above or below the price, the price will normally go to it. Well, I would say she went to it. I mean, she just didn't bobble underneath here and gradually grow. She shot to it. Now, I know she could have shot back here, but you don't normally see it as soon as they come on. It takes time for everybody to realize they're there, and then boom, something happens. So we've got that in the picture as well. So she did. <laughs> There's our 200 haul right there, folks. She's sitting on top of it. Bounced off of the 200 haul, shot through the 200 with a big long wick, coming back down no lower than where she started from. That makes this, in my book, a directional intentional spike. In other words, it's a sincere token. It's going to climb. She's going to look for an opportunity. And what is an opportunity? Well, a catalyst, yes. But on the chart, it is a flat 200. As soon as that 200 goes flat, and what's going to make it go flat? The price climbing. Well, what, what did she just do? She pushed the price way the heck up here. There was a little string attached to this. It's tugging that 200. The price is making the price 
change to 200 and it is now watching it. And as soon as that goes flat, you watch if this does not take off and run. Our uh, oscillators, they're taking a turn. That was a big climb up to 10 cents and we're back down to three cents. That was a huge drop. So all of our oscillators have turned around and look a bit sad right now. Looking at our one hour, 20 day view. Under the 50, no 200 in the picture yet. We don't have enough volume for that data. She's under the 50, got above it, and then busted loose, came back down, and we're back to our 50. But the 50 is a little bit higher than where it was, but really it looks like it's going sideways right now. This doesn't show a whole lot of potential. Volume was strong at the beginning of the day, and it just petered away to exactly what we were getting days before. Oscillators, very wimpy on the one hour chart. Not seeing a lot of heat there at all. Five day, five minute. We got a low here of two and a half cents. Jump to 10 cents. That's a 400% run right there, folks. Came back down, hit the 20 day and did not hold. I look, looked like she was coming around, but just couldn't hold it. That's okay. I see this as a buying opportunity. Look, no matter what you think about AEPT, Works is coming over here. They've told us that. They are merging Works into AEPT. They're going to change their name and they're going to move up to the NASDAQ. So Works is leaving her big NASDAQ boat to come over to the pink pond in this littler boat, which is at three cents, which has to build the boat out to $3 or more to get onto the NASDAQ. You want to get yourself a good seat over here before it is crowded and you get some corner boxed in area. Right now the price is falling, but you've seen the potential. You've seen where she can jump. And right now we are just over three cents. I can't tell you to buy folks, but I'm going to buy some. This is a very good opportunity. She may come down lower. If you think it's going to come down lower, the best thing to do, don't buy everything you want. Buy half of what you bought. Buy one third. And if it falls, you can celebrate while everybody else is crying because they're losing money. You're getting a better deal and buying something you want on sale and you're bringing your average price down. And when she ultimately starts to climb, you've got a better price than you originally started with. There's a lot more information I could be sharing with you folks about these stocks. So I hope you're not just stopping with what I give you. It's your money. Remember that. So fill in the gaps on the DD. And one of the most important things, folks, especially if you're looking at stocks on the OTC, pinks, look at the management real hard because management is what the pinks are all about. Bad management, bad stock. Doesn't matter about anything else. It's all about the people. Thanks for showing up, folks. I appreciate sharing my due diligence with you. You go do your own now. The more you know the more you're going to grow. See ya.